dear learners welcome to the video lesson on once upon a time by gabriel vaca this is the first poem and the semester 3 of ug second year i am dr t akkiraju lecturer in english rds government degree college bhimavar before we go into the actual poem and its details let me explain the learning outcomes of the presentation the first one is to understand okara's agony over over cultural loss and impact at the end of the present lesson you will be able to understand what is the agony of the poet gabriel okara over the loss of his african culture and the impact of its loss and the second one you will be able to identify the difference between present and past cultures and the third outcome is you will be able to find out the ill effects that's the bad impact of western influence on the africans and you will be able to improve your vocabulary in english so these four are the learning outcomes with these learning outcomes in the mind let us move towards the actual poem let me explain a few details about the author so look at the picture in the center of the center of this page Gabriel Okara in his old age Okara is a Nigerian poet and a novelist Nigeria is an African country he was he belongs to Nigeria he has written poems as well as novels he loves traditional african culture right from the beginning he protests that is he speaks against colonial influences what are colonial influences the european people european countries in the past came to asian and african countries and occupied their lands and even countries together so this european influence is also known as colonial influence the poetry of okara is pristine that's pure from the heart and the nature and it's original he never copies either themes or techniques the most popular novel of okara is the voice and the most popular poem of okara is piano and drums a few important points about the the poem and its structure and its tone so the poem is a nostalgic one what's a nostalgic poem a poem that recollects the past that recounts the past that narrates the poet's love and longing for the past is a nostalgic poem so in the present poem also the poet longs for the sweet past which he has lost now and the structure of the poem is 
it is addressed to his son that is in the form of an address to a son by a father let us see the context in which the poem took place we need to find out the nigerian background before we understand how the african culture was invaded by the european culture and how the poet feels lost and forlorn see the geographical background bhaugolika paristhiti nigeria ok paristhiti anamata so nigeria is an african country on guinea gulf maniki gulf countries we have saudi qatar etc gulf countries like this gulf is persian gulf in the same way in the african continent we have guinea gulf so on the gulf of guinea this nigeria is situated and the capital city of nigeria is abuja sometimes it is called called abuja the currency of nigeria is nigerian naira and let us see the political background of nigeria like india nigeria was a colony of the united kingdom for more than 50 years see we were under the british rule we indians were under the british rule for about 200 years in the same way nigeria was under british rule for more than 50 years they got independence in 1960 that's after 13 years of indian independence and it became republic in 1963 so let's move on to the actual content of the poem poem lo unna 20 actual saramsham anamata the poet contrasts between past and the present in terms of human behavior contrast what is contrast if you compare the negative points or the differences between one and another we say contrast tarathamyam so this contrast is explained in terms of human behavior manavuni pravartanalu elanti tarathamyalu ochini past ki present ki laughing and handshaking how the human behavior has changed in laughing and in handshaking treating guests and wearing different faces parting and meeting so the first one is laughing once upon a time man laughed with hearts and eyes what is laughing with hearts and eyes it means when man laughs it starts from his heart and it appears in his eyes so both eyes face and hearts are interlinked the whole body is involved in the biological activity of laughing so he is biologically and emotionally involved in the laughter but now but now people laugh with only teeth the modern man when he laughs only his teeth appears rather the laughter appears only in his teeth his laughter doesn't is not reflected in his eyes it doesn't come from his heart 
he is laughing just showing his teeth only for the sake of display show off and the next one is hand shaking we all know hand shaking we all do hand shake with our friends and relatives but uh, how was this hand shaking once let me explain hand shake was warm and friendly what is warm warm means full of affection full of love people used to handshake with full of love and friendliness but now it's quite official and mechanical he gives a handshake very casually without emotional involvement and the next one is treating guests how human behavior has changed in treating guests guests were welcome to stay for any number of days if you once upon a time if you ask your father or your grandmother they will tell if the relatives come to our house they will stay for more than 2 or 3 months but now if they stay for more than 2 or 3 days we cannot bear their presence our treatment changes towards them relatives or even friends and next one wearing different faces see how man is changing his faces his face display according to the context how was it in the past you see man used to wear his heart on the face once upon a time see if you look at his face you will understand his heart so once upon a time face was the index of the mind so that way what he thinks what is his mind you can easily tell by looking at his face but now man manages the face see he manages his face may be completely different from what he thinks what he feels in the heart we cannot read his face and tell his intention rotation the face to chapalan and parting parting was warm and emotional once upon a time so when the relatives came to your house when this when they were going away people used to get emotional so goodbye is an expression we use at the time of parting so once upon a time goodbye means good wishes for those who are parting from us but now parting is cold and emotionless it's a casual activity nobody feels sorry or nobody cries out of emotion so the meaning of goodbye has changed in the modern context goodbye means now thank god the devil is gone who is the devil who has stayed with us for more than 3 or 5 days next meeting meetings were warm and happy like partings meetings were very emotional they were very warm and they were very happy when they see the people coming towards them they used to feel emotional and they used to hug glad to meet you that's the expression we use when we meet others so the meaning of this expression was once it is very happy for us to meet you but now meetings are boring and light glad to meet you means my god this devil has come so this is the new meaning of glad to meet you so on the whole what is the poet's worry let me explain 
the point feels very sorry for the loss of the original african culture and the manners he is unhappy with the present culture what is the present culture it's a mixture of european and african cultures the present culture is dominated by the european culture so he doesn't like this european culture which is quite artificial and emotionless that's why he is very unhappy with the present culture and he is torn between european and african cultures so on one side his past african culture his beloved culture he is calling him back and on the other side the european impact on him he is also very strong that's why he is in a conflict and what's the poet's wish at the end of the poem what does he want to have if we know that he is not happy with the present manners present culture so the wish is he wants to gabriel okara as an nigerian as an african as an african poet he wants to unlearn present artificial manners so along with all africans or nigerians he has learned european manners and culture now he wants to unlearn them learning is acquiring unlearning is getting rid of odile vedam anamata vaaki so he wants to unlearn the present artificial culture he wants to relearn those old pristine manners so after unlearning he wants to relearn them how does he relearn and from whom does he relearn see we remember he is addressing this poem to his son a father and a son okay a father's worry and a father's wish is to unlearn the present culture and relearn the old culture from the son why from the son is the son not influenced by the european culture no so the children are they very innocent their manners and culture are pure and original and the culture and the manners of the africans once upon a time were pure and original like the children's manners like the children's behavior so it's quite natural so he wants to relearn those old manners from his son from the child so let me sum up the whole poem the poet's worry is about the loss of traditional culture sampradaya suddhamaina african culture poinde ani ana chala baga padipoyindi so the african culture enduku manchido enduku better culture enduku dani adi poyindi ani baga padutunnaru teliyalante past culture ni present culture ni compare cheyali so he contrasts past and present cultures in terms of human behavior and highlights the merits of the past a past african traditional culture yokka merits dan yokka virtues good qualities ni manike highlight chestu past and present ni compare chestadu poem and he wishes to relearn the past culture and manners from his son so he wants to have his past original african traditional culture back in place of the present european culture and manners this is how 
Okara expresses his agony, worry, and wish. There are a few language inputs, particularly in relation to the vocabulary. Let me explain. So the poet uses conforming smiles. This is an expression he uses in the poem. Conforming. What is conform? Conform is different from conform. Conform means adjust. Okay? Smiles shown in accordance with context. Person. See, if you speak to the boss, you will show one kind of smile. If you speak to your friend, you will show one kind of smile. Like that. So, smiles shown or displayed in accordance with the context of the person. How do we use this? So there, people conform to the situation. So, Parasitan Bhattu Manishi Prasto, Mari Potu, Matlar Tuna, Face Bhattu. See, this conform can be confused with confirm quite often. So, it's a confusable word pay. What is confirm, F I R M? It means to approve. For example, the usage, the manager confirmed his resignation. So he has resigned. And now somebody has resigned. Now the manager confirmed his resignation. Okay. Next, portrait smile. The poet uses this expression also. This is fixed smile. This is almost opposite to conforming smile. The old lady always wears a portrait smile. See, that means the old lady always appears with a smile on her lips. Portrait smile. See, a smile in the portrait, in the painting or in the picture is always permanent. Okay? You cannot change the smiling face of the photo. Like that kind of smile is called portrait smile. So next, another another word is redance. What is redance? This is reading. Reading means udalichpoda. An act of reading is called redance. The redance of you teasers in the street is a big relief for the girls. So you teasers ni udalichpoda. That's a relief for the girls. So Eli, we read three expressions which are called you change. We vocabulary ni Improve this coach. In fact, only words on the original text. Student, one, two, three, four links, three links on the end. First one, student, click the link for the original poem. So, we go original poem. We do this lesson on the Vila Tarot of Sapatan. We do this link. We click this. We do the original poem. We upload this paper. Next, the second link on the end. Maniki question answers in the notes. University exam calls na question answers akarunta echarunta. Next, maybe poem inka anta in tarvata, miru inka clarity kaalante, e link click cheste, e poem yoka telugu version untundi. Mutton total poem yoka telugu anuvadu untundi mutta poem yadikuda. Okay, all the best. Thank you.